In this video, we're going to learn about encoding strings in Apache Parquet. Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. We're going to be using PyArrow in this video. PyArrow is the Apache Arrow Python bindings, and it has really good support for reading and writing Apache Parquet files. So we're going to import PyArrow into our Python REPL, and now we're going to create a list that contains some HTML color codes. Uh, it's going to contain, in fact, 15,000 of those. And once we've done that, we're going to create a table from those codes with the column safe x color. Let's have a look at that table. So you can see we've got a bunch of, of different, different colors in there. And now we're going to write that table out to a file called data color.parquet. We'll turn off like a bunch of the store schema. We'll disable compression. And then we've got, we're using default values for dictionary page size limit, data page size, and write batch size. Now let's just quickly remind ourselves how data is stored in Parquet files. So Parquet files contain row groups, and then within a row group, we have column chunks. So we have one column chunk for every column. And then a column chunk contains pages that fit into kind of three configurations. So we could have a dictionary that contains a mapping of indices to the, to the values in that column, followed by data pages that only contain the, those dictionary indices. We could have just the raw data. So we could have like every single, like the raw data sort of all the way down the pages. And then the third configuration is where we start with a dictionary and maybe we have one or potentially more pages using those dictionary indices, but then perhaps we exceed the size of the dictionary page limit and then we fall back to storing the raw values. We're going to be inspecting everything using the Parquet CLI tool. I've wrapped all this up into a Docker image, so markhnm 4 slash PQ if you want to give it a try. Let's now come over to our command line and we'll run it and see what commands it has. You can see there's a bunch of subcommands. We've got meta, we've got pages, we've got dictionary, we've got a whole load of other things as well. We're going to use the pages subcommand and we're going to pass it in the color Parquet file. And so what you can see here is this particular column chunk has two pages. We've got one for the dictionary and one for the data. Notice that the dictionary has 4,096 files. And then the, the encoding of R indicates that we're using indices. So the dictionary indices for, the, for every entry in that data page. We can also have a look at the dictionary. So we can call, pass in, call the dictionary subcommand and pass in the name of the column. And we can have a look, and so we can see the mapping. So zero goes to uh, sort of six zeros, 10 goes to four zeros and two A's and, and sort of so on. And if we scroll down to the end, we can see, as you would hopefully expect, the last entry is 4,095. Now notice that the average size in the data page is 1.5 bytes. So we don't need to, to, store, to use like a whole integer to store each of these values. We can actually just use the bit length is needs to just fit up to 4,095. And if we come over to our Python REPL, we can have a look at what's the, the bit length that would fit the maximum value of 4,095, which is 12. We can then have a look at what's the binary representation for 4,095, which is all ones, for zero, all zeros, and then for 15, it's zeros all the way up, and then the last four are ones. Now let's have a look what happens if we change the limit. So we're going to restrict this to 30 kilobytes and leave everything else the same. And now if we come back to our um, to our other tab and we run the pages command, we can see this time we've got the dictionary in, in the at the top, then the first page is using the R encoding, so that means it's all indices, but then it falls back to storing those raw values, so sort of raw values representing the, the colors. Now let's have a look at another one. What happens if we restrict the, the data page size as well? So that's now two kilobytes. And again, let's have a look at the file using the pages command. And you see this time we've still got our dictionary. And this time it's got, it's got 3,072 entries. And we've got three data pages with the R, so three data pages containing indices. And then it, then it falls back. And the reason for that is that the pages are actually created in memory while the dictionary is also being created. And then once the dictionary sort of exceeds its size, it gets flushed and then any pages there are flushed and then we fall back after that. Now let's have a look at what happens if we don't even use a dictionary at all. So we'll set use dictionary equals false. And if we have a look this time, you can see that we've got just the data page. There's no dictionary there and the average size is 11 bytes because it's just storing those sort of strings in UTF format, UTF-8 format even, which is sort of storing between one and four, uh, one and four bytes per character. What about if we sort the table? So we'll call the sorted command on our, on our colors, and then we'll write out a version with a dictionary and a version without. Let's have a look at the one with a dictionary first. And so you can see this time, actually the average size of each entry in the data page is down to 0.43 bytes, so sort of three or four bits. 
where and if we compare that to what it was before it's it's kind of about three times three times smaller and the reason for that is that parquet is is using the sort of run length encoding and so it means if you have consecutive values that are the same it's not just going to store those values over and over again it's going to say for example i've got indies seven five times rather than storing seven 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 and so by doing that if you have lots of duplicates it's able to say lots of duplicates that are next to each other it's able to save a lot of space and if we look at the no dictionary one we can see that the data being sorted doesn't actually have any impact on the size here and that's because the run length encoding technique that we saw with the dictionary file only applies to dictionary indices or boolean values so it can't actually be applied to strings and so that's why it doesn't actually make a difference whether the data is sorted or not and so that's it i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one